learning CSS based animation. Let's start. We will learn animation using CSS cascading style sheets. Previously, we used to do it using JavaScript, jQuery. Now it's been included in CSS. In this video, we will start by creating a new HTML page. Create a class and define animation dash name. This is the name through which the animation will be accessed, in particular the keyframes. Then you need to define the animation dash duration. This is given in seconds. And animation dash iteration dash count. This is the number of times the animation actually runs. By default it's zero. Therefore the animation won't run. The animation duration is also zero seconds. Therefore it won't run by default. And you can't actually have an animation without the animation name. So to get the animation up and running, we need to define three things, animation dash name, animation dash duration, and animation dash iteration count. We'll begin shortly. Start with the definitions of the style. We defined a style. Then we are creating a CSS class. It's called animation class as it should be. Within this, we are defining a background color. Background color yellow, just so that you can identify the animation element on the page. Next. I've applied that class to a div on the page and written hello inside the div. Div class is equal to animation class. Now I run the page and we'll view it inside Chrome. See, you get a div and the div is yellow colored. No animation as yet, but we have become well defined a class and got it up and running on the browser. Next step. Define an animation name. You can define anything. We'll call it my anim. Then animation dash duration, 10 seconds. The animation will complete in 10 seconds. Now animation dash iteration count, as we said. Three times. The animation will run three times from beginning till end. Now this is the next part. You define keyframes, add the red keyframes, and within this you get to define two different CSS configurations, one under the from section and the other in the to section. See, from background dash color red, the animation will start and at that time the element will have a background color of red. Then to, and within this we'll define the background color that will come at the end. That is blue. So you start at background dash color red and end at background dash color blue. Now I refresh that page. It still isn't running. Something is missing. We'll shortly find out. Keyframes and you got to enter the animation name here. Therefore, these keyframes are of the my anim class now. And the animation is up and running. As you can see, the color is changing from red to blue. See. 
So we got our animation up and running. A very basic animation, but it's an important step. And once you get it running, everything else is easy. Now, I'll try and get it moving, get the div moving. So I defined position absolute. You cannot actually move something unless you define position absolute. Then left 10 pixel and right and left 500 pixel. So it will start at 10 pixel and move up to 500 pixel within 10 seconds and do it three times. There you are. To define movement, you must put position absolute, otherwise the things won't move. The default is static and static does not allow placement. If you want to run the animation infinitely, you write infinite in the animation dash iteration dash count. Now, we'll try animation dash direction. Alternate. Animation. Dash direction alternate. Previously we didn't we had we had not defined it. See it moves there now and then comes back. Previously you can go back and check those frames. The div was simply jumping back to its original situation and now it's actually going to and fro. After one iteration the animation returns the reverse way from to to from. The other option here is the default value normal. Since the default value doesn't need to be given, so we had not given it. You can go back and play the animation a few frames back and understand the difference between animation dash direction normal and animation dash direction alternate. Next, animation dash delay. This is given in seconds and it means that the page will wait for the delay number of seconds before starting the animation. So the animation doesn't start as soon as the page loads. The animation will start after a certain duration. This is animation dash delay. It's sometimes necessary because people don't actually start watching the page at load time. So you should provide a slight delay so that the viewer gets adjusted before the Animation starts. Animation dash delay four seconds. Now, I've refreshed the page. You can watch. It waited for four seconds and then the animation started playing and it's playing as usual now, back and forth, because the direction is alternate. So animation dash delay causes the animation to play after the delay number of seconds that we have provided. What next? Next we'll try animation that's play state. The animation can be in two play states. One is paused and the other is running. And you can bind it to different events so that the pause and the play are actually 
dependent on some user input. For example, the mouse going over the animated element. Animation that play state we've made it paused. This means the animation won't be playing by won't start playing by default. Now we add another CSS class. Animation class dash hover. Hover is an event. And inside that you go and write animation dash play state running. So what will happen? By default it will be paused and when the mouse goes over it the animation will start moving. It's still in the delay, therefore it wasn't running. Go back. Yes, everything is okay. See, the delay wasn't allowing it to run. Now there you are. When the mouse goes over it, it will move. And when the mouse moves out, the thing gets paused. So you must remember that if you're using play state, you cannot use delay because the delay doesn't actually allow the animation to proceed. Now we'll change it to the other way around. Animation that play state running and will stay will make it paused on hover. In this case, the animation will play by itself and you can put the mouse over it to stop it. So if you're planning on using animation display state and want to keep it paused in the beginning, you should not be using delay because in that case, the animation will never play. Remember this, otherwise it's easy. I brought back the animation delay. Next. There you are, it's playing back the original way now as we had made it. Now to the next topic. Animation dash. The animation returns to the original state at the end of the numbers of iterations that we're running. Now, what have, what do we do if we want the animation, animated element to not return to the original place and stay at the end wherever the animation leaves it? To achieve this, we need to go to animation dash fill mode. Animation dash film at forwards will make the animated element remain at the in the situation that it was at the end of the two CSS configuration. Animation dash film mode dash fill dash mode forwards will leave it in the final state as per the end of the animation, which is the CSS configuration for the two state. Now, the other option here is animation dash fill mode backwards. What does this do? This jumps over the delay and puts the element in the two starting, in the from starting configuration even before the delay period is ended. In our case, our original definition is background dash color yellow. And after the delay in the from CSS, it must change to red. 
when you use animation dash fill dash mode backwards, it will actually originally change over to red as defined in the from CSS part. There you are. See, it's already red. Otherwise, it used to be yellow, and when the delay period got over, it used to change to red. Animation does fill mode forwards, leaves the animation at the end of the, in the final position after the play of the animation. Animation dash backwards puts the animation in the from configuration immediately, even before the delay is add, added. Both adds the capabilities of backwards and forwards to the animation. See. The animation is already red. Let it run. And it ends up in the final position. That's backwards and forwards. Now we've only got a from situation and a to situation. What happens if you want multiple animations? That is, you want to set up a number of keyframes. For instance, going from position one to two and from two to three in the same animation. For that, you need to define percentages in the keyframes. Obviously, you start from zero and end up at 100%. And in between, you can define in as many different CSS configurations as we want. We'll be going from red to blue and then to green. So go to the keyframe sections. And the movement will be from 0 to 500 and then back to 250. Zero percent, background dash color red, and left is zero pixel. Now, at 50%, background dash color is blue, and the left position is 500 pixel, which is as it should be. Now we'll add a new 100% CSS configuration. Background dash color green, left 250px, this is important. So it will start at zero, go to 500, and then come back to 250 and change colors all the while. See. And since it's alternate, therefore it's playing back and forth. That's it. The basics. Thank you.